Welcome to our lecture online. There has been ample evidence found that Mars at one point was a wet planet with rivers and clouds and rain and erosion and oceans and lakes. Yes, all that was there. And because of that, we know that at one point in time, there must have been a lot more atmosphere because currently the atmosphere is so thin that it cannot support liquid water. So at one point in time, there must have been enough atmosphere. And the question is, how much was there? And the estimates range about half of what the atmospheric pressure is on the Earth. So still plenty of atmosphere so that the planet could be a, a planet that could uh, support liquid water and potentially even life. And that's the big question. If there was water, could there have been life on Mars? Mars is close enough to the sun that temperatures may have been comfortable enough for life to exist under those conditions. But what happened to all the atmosphere? We now know that the atmospheric pressure is less than 1% of the atmospheric pressure on the Earth. So something happened to the atmosphere. And it turns out that something is that it was lost to space. Planets can only hang on to the atmosphere under two conditions. One, that they're large enough so that the gravitational force is powerful enough to hang on to the atmosphere. And two, that it's not too hot because the hotter it is, the faster the molecules move and the more likely they are to escape away from the gravitational force of the planet. If the velocity of the, of the uh, molecules exceed the escape velocity of the planet, atmosphere will leak out. And presumably for Mars, that was the case. Let me explain. So here what we have is a curve that shows you the velocity of the molecules and the amount of molecules at that particular velocity. So you can see that there's kind of an average right here. Most of the molecules have about this type of velocity, but some molecules travel faster than others and a very few might travel faster than the escape velocity of the planet. In this case, the escape velocity of Mars is about five kilometers per second, which is about three miles per second. And for the Earth is 11 kilometers per second, which is more than twice as much. So therefore, the molecules don't need as much speed to get away from Mars because the escape velocity is smaller. So they're more likely to reach that escape velocity. The size of the planet, of course, is important. The bigger the planet, the more mass it has. The Earth's radius is 6,378 kilometers as opposed to the radius of Mars, which is only 3,400 kilometers. Smaller planet means smaller gravitational force and less escape velocity typically. The acceleration due to gravity on Mars is only 38% the escape velocity of the Earth. Again, or I should say not the escape velocity, but the acceleration due to gravity is about 38% uh, of that of the Earth. Another factor, of course, is temperature. The hotter it is, the faster the molecules move, and we know that on Mars it can get pretty cold. With temperatures as low as minus 127 degrees centigrade, which is a lot colder than the coldest ever measured at the Antarctic. But the temperatures during the daytime in the summer near the equator can be as high as 20 degrees centigrade, which is quite a bit warmer than you'll find in some of the colder places in our solar system further away from the sun. So the temperatures are still sufficiently high to give enough energy to the molecules, especially on warmer days, that molecules could, ex could exceed the escape velocity of Mars. And of course, it also has time on the side because Mars has been around for about four and a half billion years. So for the last four and a half billion years, this process has been ongoing. And over the millions and millions of years, this enormous span of time, very slowly, the atmosphere leaked out. And what happens is when molecules escape, this whole chart rearranges itself and less and less atmosphere will be there. But always, there will always be a few molecules that go fast enough to escape. And as less and less atmosphere appears on the surface of Mars and less and less atmosphere, molecules will continue to escape because a few of them will always go faster than the escape velocity. And over time, the atmosphere simply disappears to space. Also, because of the lack of protection against radiation, uh, you have the radiation from the sun, which breaks down the molecules into smaller pieces. Those molecules are then less heavy. They can then escape easier. And so Mars simply didn't have the protection, but they didn't have the magnetic field that it needed to protect it from the onslaught of high energy radiation. And so the atmosphere simply did not have a chance. And over time, it simply disappeared into space. Of course, it's 25,000 trillion kilograms of it left, but that's a small amount relative to how much the Earth has and just not enough to sustain liquid water. 
And that's a real shame. It would have been so interesting if Mars still had its atmosphere and Mars still had liquid water and oceans and rains and all that, perhaps even life. So I think Mars missed its chance to have life on its surface. We're still looking for the possibility that during a short period of time, maybe several hundred million years or half a billion years that Mars had the kind of environment where water existed and lakes existed and oceans existed, warm enough for life to be able to, to start on the surface of Mars. But we have not yet at this point have found definitive proof that life ever existed on Mars. Again, the atmosphere didn't stick around long enough for that to happen. And that is the problem with the atmosphere escaping into space when the planets are too small and the temperatures are too high. Will there ever be no atmosphere at all? So we'll never get down to zero atmosphere. There always will be some, obviously, but it's just going to continue escaping. Uh, you know, they talk about terraforming uh, Mars, and, but as they're trying to make more atmosphere, it's going to keep leaking off. And, of course, when you talk about terraforming, imagine that right now with less than 1% of the atmosphere on the Earth, um, there's still 25 trillion, 25,000 trillion kilograms of atmosphere, so simply doubling it would, would require an enormous amount of energy, an enormous amount of infrastructure to make that happen. So I think terraforming of Mars is probably out of the question. Well, you could it's biosphere. Biospheres is the way to go, um, but again, you have to get all that equipment up there, and it's very difficult to go to Mars. So yeah, it's, we're we're talking about some extremely difficult engineering and scientific problems to overcome to be able to live on the surface of Mars. Yeah.